Hawaii. The Crystal Blue Waters. The legendary surf. The crowded beaches. But there's a different side of Hawaii hidden from most people. Meet the legendary Paniola, the Cowboys of Hawaii. What began with a gift of a few cows and a bull has grown into a community that's passed down their hunting, fishing, and ranching methods for generations. This is Parker Ranch on the Big Island of Hawaii. 130,000 sprawling acres of cattle ranching. Each year, the ranch hosts the annual rodeo and horse races event, which takes place every 4th of July. It's a come all ages type of event where young and old come together to showcase their mastery of the rope and saddle. But not all ranches are as sprawling as Parker Ranch, and not all ranchers are men. For Barbara Nobriga, ranching is a way of life that she hopes to preserve for future generations. This land that we're on now was land granted to my great-grandmother in the mid-1800s by King Kamehameha IV. The house was built in 1904 by my grandparents. We've been living in this house now for the last almost 60 years. The birth of the cattle industry, everything west of the Rockies, was right here, right on this parcel. At a very early age, I made up my mind this was my home. I was going to ranch and nothing was going to change my mind. Let me have this. I'm going to give it to you soon enough, okay? I'm just going to skip it first. Life is still the same here as it was during my grandparents' time. We're still living on the same land and still doing the same thing that they did back then. But we still work the cattle the same way and shoe the horse the same way. Yeah, time stands still up here. People come to Hawaii for the surf, the fishing, the beach, the coffee. But people don't realize that the backbone of our way of living is agriculture, not tourism. We have lots of wild sheep and pigs. We raise our own cattle. And we eat the fruits according to the seasons. We basically live off the land. They say you educate the world to eating taro. You won't have any famine. So we have very good diets, clean diets, no insecticides, um, just good food. Our biggest challenge is the drought. When we don't have water, our cattle do not have grass to feed on. Even though volcanoes are a threat for about 3% of the island currently, it's in the quality of the air that gives many of us problems. When things get dry and we have a thunderstorm, our biggest worry is that We'll have a lightning strike in some of the dry areas and we'll start a fire. And that has happened many times. The Hawaiian tree saddle is the most comfortable saddle. It will outlast the Western saddle any day. It's comfortable, it's durable, it's not as heavy, doesn't have as much junk on it. And it's made of either a balsa wood, which is a light, light wood, or 
In some cases they use guava or koa, but the balsa was the best. We work on the rocks, we work on the uh-uh, and if you have a horse that's not raised on the rocks, they just can't handle it. The horses that are raised on the rocks, they know how to step, they know where the holes are, and of course the Hawaiian horse has hooves tough as nails. I started teaching kids in 1971, and I'm still doing it. That's not the right way to do it, so don't, don't practice that, but I know it's hard. <laughs> okay, who didn't do the barrels? Everybody, Paul? Yeah. Let's get you lined up over here for... This saddle will be down below. Just tie him up. Everybody who's Paul Kalkau, tie him up. Times haven't changed. Kids haven't changed. They're still the same. When kids come up here for lessons, they take a step back in time. No cell phones, no iPads. When they're here, that doesn't exist. I don't like to see kids on the other side of the fence knowing that they can't afford to come and, and ride. So those are the kids I focused on. Now, many years later, I have the second and third generation coming in to ride. I've got a great group of kids and a great group of parents. Parents are very helpful. The kids are, they come up, they're shy, they're scared. They don't know what to do. You, you work with them, you work them through it, and we've sent out some very accomplished riders. Every year, Barbara helps coordinate the King Kamehameha Parade in downtown Kona, which celebrates the traditions and cultures of her native Hawaii. It's yet another way that Barbara helps bring light to the history of their island land. I'm very aware of possibly losing our culture. We try to instill in the kids the preservation, keep your culture alive. If we don't preserve our culture, we'll lose it. And then what? Our aim is to preserve our culture, our legacy. It's been in our family for generations and we plan to keep it here. And I must say, we raised one hell of a batch of kids. And we all continue to ranch and we are making sure that that is our legacy that will be continued, perpetuated through our children. Everybody's heart is here. Everybody comes home for the holidays. We have our own party right here. We're in the seventh generation now of our family. I'm the fourth. There's three more after us. And I, I feel very secure that those three generations will continue 